Hi, the other day I went outdoor to take a picture with my Sony A5000 and the FE 28mm f2 lens. I'll share with you my view on this camera in the year 2020, whether uh, it's a good photography camera compared to the Nikon 7000, as well as other uses that you can use for this camera, what's the pro and cons. Even the year 2020, I think this camera is still relevant. Let's talk about it. Okay, so when I took the Sony A5000 with the FE lens out to take photos, the only thing I dislike about this camera is that it doesn't have the viewfinder. The Nikon D7000 has a viewfinder, which I find very useful. However, the screen itself uh, on a bright day is usable. I wouldn't say it's uh, great, but it's usable. Now when I do my uh, photography, I usually set it to DMF, direct manual focus. So how it works is that when you turn it on and then you press the shutter button here halfway and then you're able to do manual focus. I think this is a very useful technique. Um, I also set the zebra uh, on and as well as the, um, the high uh, contrast focus as well. They call it the um, focus peaking. So I set it to red. So I'm able to focus on the object. Usually when I'm doing nature photography, I take my time. So when I do the manual focus, um, I really can control uh, the scene or the object that I want to take picture with really well. So that's what I usually do. I set to DMF and then I'll press halfway and then I'll use my manual focus to focus the object. And then once I do that, I'll take a picture and I'll get the image 99% of the time perfectly. So that's how I do it with this uh, camera. Like I said, I would prefer if it has the, um, the viewfinder like the Nikon D7000. Now, I prefer the Nikon D7000 better than the uh, Sony A5000. But the important thing is, of course, the image, right? As long as you learn the camera really well and you know its limits, I think the, uh, uh, the uh, Sony A5000 with the uh, FE lens, now a good lens. It doesn't have to be an FE lens. The reason I have an FE lens or the full frame lens from Sony is because I have a couple camera that is full frame. And so, um, you know, I'm, I don't really invest in the APS-C because um, eventually I'm gonna be moving towards the uh, full frame. But uh, I have my APS-C cameras mainly for videos. So that's why I have still, um, some of my lenses are still APS-C, but they're not the best type. They're more of the kit lens type. Uh, but most of my uh, nice prime lens are the FE lens. So I usually put that on my uh, A5000. So if you're gonna invest in the, you know, the A5000 or the A6000, it's very important that you get a good lens, okay? It doesn't have to be FE lens, but a good prime lens, APS-C prime lens is great. Um, yeah, I think for the year 2020, as long as you know how to use the camera properly, I think this camera is still relevant. And I'm gonna show you the picture right after this video that the quality is quite good. This is a uh, 20 megapixel camera and uh, it does video quite well. The one thing I like about it compared to the Nikon D7000 is that it does have a flip up screen so you can see yourself. So it's a great for vlogging camera. And so if you're doing photography and then you're doing vlogging and for the price, like you can get this camera uh, used for under $150, that's amazing. And just get a nice kit lens. Uh, I think that's okay for now. And uh, within the, uh, about $250 uh, Canadian, you probably can get a decent camera with the kit lens uh, used. And that's amazing if you can get that uh, uh, offer, right? You can get that uh, price. If you get that price, this is a great camera. And definitely, you know, if you're into videos and uh, photography, I highly recommend the Sony A5000. In fact, there's a, even a special mode that you can do and check online. I have a video on that too, where you can actually um, uh, uh, take away the limit of 30 minutes uh, recording. Uh, you can make it to unlimited recording depending on the, the battery power, right? So the battery lasts about, um, for videos anyway, lasts about 90 minutes. So if you're, uh, you know, modify the app, you can actually record this for about 90 minutes uh, continuously. The only problem is that uh, in a hot day, let's say in the 90 degrees uh, uh, Fahrenheit, 
this camera does overheat so in a very hot day like 90 plus then uh, it can record maybe about 20 25 minutes but in a room temperature like in this room for example it will record close to 90 minutes right no problem and if you hook up to the external monitor this can continue on to uh, record right onto the camera itself so I don't know why that if you hook up to a uh, you know through a HDMI uh, monitor this camera doesn't overheat okay so I think this camera is still good for 2020 it does overheat if you use it for more than 30 minutes outdoor okay 20 30 minutes um, but if you're hooking up to the external monitor even at 90 degrees outdoor I think it can record uh, continuously as long as you mod that uh, special uh, or you download that special app you're able to do uh, more than 30 minutes recording which is amazing and this is an APS-C sensor so compared to let's say micro four thirds or um, you know your iPhone and all that stuff uh, this camera definitely has a better uh, uh, image for low light so you know if you want to film uh, in the evening for example uh, you can crank your ISO up to I think 800 uh, with a bit of little noise okay I wouldn't go beyond 1600 I think even 1600 1600 ISO on the uh, on the video it's um, a little bit grainy I mean depend on how you can tolerate grain right but I would think 800 to 16 1600 uh, ISO and, and, and then maybe switch it to video mode uh, I think it's pretty good Okay, so this camera is amazing. Now it can only record 1080p, which you know for YouTube videos, this is more than adequate. Most of my YouTube videos is 1080p anyway. So you, if you're going to do short film on YouTube videos or, on, or you know streaming online, which that's most of us would do anyway, even independent filmmakers, uh, 1080p, I think this camera is still amazing. Uh, the only problem, of course, is the audio. I would suggest that um, you know for interview, you have to be quite close, maybe within uh, two meters, and there's no background noise, and the internal recording is not too bad. But I would suggest that you buy an external uh, re uh, audio recorder to record it separately, and then you can sync it uh, in your video uh, editor. So that's probably the best strategy I would advise you to do. Uh, it has a built-in um, flash as you can see here but I don't like the flash I don't know something about the flash it's not as great as the Nikon D7000 the uh, flash on the Nikon D7000 is I think has a better quality when it uh, when you use flash you don't see as much contrast compared to the um, the Sony A5000 something about the flash is not well made and when it flash when it uses flash it looks very synthetic and artificial whereas this one I think the Nikon D7000 has a better flash now we I talked about the battery power on the Sony you know 90 minutes but uh, you know when you take photography wise this also lasts pretty long too uh, but not as long as the Nikon D7000 I, I, I think I made a review on this camera before and you know this uh, uh, battery lasts probably two times more than the battery on Sony here okay but like I said again, you know, 200, I mean, 400 uh, photos, you know, to 500 photos is pretty good, right, for, you know, a uh, camera this size. So just bring two uh, batteries and you can take uh, almost 1,000 pictures. And uh, that's, you know, comparable to this camera here. Uh, I only need one battery for this one. In fact, I think it's more than, uh, I can take more than 1,000 on this camera, the Nikon D7000. And of course, the reason for that is uh, I use, uh, when I take photo, I always, always use the viewfinder more than the, um, the LCD screen. I only use the LCD screen to make sure I don't overexpose, underexpose the picture. But where here, I don't have that option. That's the only reason, right? So that's why it does drain the battery quite quickly because I'm using the LCD uh, screen. Okay, so again, for photography, um, if you had a choice between the Nikon D7000 and the Sony A5000, and if it's only solely photography, I would definitely go with the Nikon D7000. But if you want to combine the video and photography, I would say this camera is the way to go because I think because of the flip-up screen, if you want to do vlogging, um, this camera is amazing uh, for that and for the price too. For less than $250, you get the camera and the kit lens. Of course, I'm talking about used camera, right? Uh, Sony A5000 used. You can probably get around 250 to 300 Canadian dollars, and I think that's still a bargain, especially if they come with uh, you know at least two batteries. Uh, that's uh, I would probably invest in that. Okay, but however, if you're just into photography, the Nikon D7000, um, yeah, I think is the way to go. It's amazingly uh, well built, especially when you're doing manual photography. This is the camera I recommend for the budget. 
I got this camera for less than 200 bucks and I got the uh, manual lens for free from uh, one of my uh, wife's friend so yeah it is there's no brainer for me <laughs> to decide to get the Nikon D7000 when I'm taking uh, nature or any uh, picture right um, that using manual lens I'll definitely pick up my Nikon D7000 however if I'm doing vlogging with videos and photography then I'll pick up my uh, Sony A5000 so so those are the choices you have to make they're both uh, very good uh, especially when it's used just make sure it works properly and make sure you get a if you don't have the lens just make sure you test it out first make sure the camera works well uh, for used camera uh, for year 2020 it is definitely uh, worthwhile to put your money on these cameras instead of buying the latest greatest camera I find that even I myself have the latest greatest camera but I rarely use that compared to these two my latest greatest camera is because you know in case I want to use more professional work but even that the, the you know the difference between you know my Sony a7 uh, R3 to these two it's I would say there's a big big difference I would say maybe like 20 30 percent at most and again once I get uh, used to these two cameras, I wouldn't even say 20%. I would say maybe 10, 15%. Right? It just depends on how experienced you are with photography and video. Uh, these camera is still relevant in the year 2020 and beyond. Thanks for watching EducateTube.com. Have a look at the picture right after this video. Bye.